In this video, I'm going to react to Gary Vaynerchuk's recent interview where he talks about what he sees as the future of AI and social media influencers. And he digs into a lot of aspects about AI and it's going to change everything. And, and I think people aren't seeing the big picture when it comes to AI. And Gary V has stayed on the front edge of technology and media and social media. And we're going to dig into his thoughts and my opinions when it comes to what this world of social media is going to look like as we prepare for the future. And Gary says it in this video that we're not looking at the big picture here. And he's not talking necessarily even just about the future, but the present. Uh, and so this is moving quickly and we're going to dig into it in this video. Hey there, if we haven't met yet, I'm Neil Smith, your social media guide. And one of the people I've looked to as a guide through the years is Gary Vaynerchuk. His book, Crush It, 15 years ago when I read it was transformative uh, for my career of really how big the social media thing is going to get. And one of the things he digs into in this video is how big AI is going to get. And I think it's a really unique perspective. And so let's dig into this video. Uh, let's see what Gary has to say about AI and social media and how we need to approach it, looking into the future and being prepared for the future. You know, I think one of the things that many of the people at VaynerX in my organization know, and many of the clients that I've interacted with in the room is, there's this obsession with everyone thinking that these things are coming tomorrow. Like more stuff, more stuff sold today because of social media organic, and advertising than any other media drove sales today. So, you know, I think, obviously I, I understand how you're setting it up, but I took the opportunity to like really pound this home to everyone. You know, the co day trading attention means that I believe marketing has shifted to something that is minute by minute, second by second, not let's sit around a boardroom for three months and come up with an idea that will come out in nine months. That world is super over, you know, I know there's a new Seinfeld movie on Netflix that has Don Draper coming back, but he's super dead. <laughs> and, and I think this, the industry um, is really struggling with Fortune 500. The, the, all the companies listed on NASDAQ are really struggling with marketing, in my opinion, and I think they have bad reporting. I think that they um, are confused, and I believe that until the world realizes that organic social media right now is the single most important thing to understand in marketing and then you build from there. I just wanna pause this real quick. And I mean, he just says it right there that we don't understand how significant the opportunity of organic social media is in the marketing world, in the marketing space. And so many people ha have really taken this side over the last even five to 10 years that social media is this pay to play game. And that's just not true. There are plenty of people that are having plenty of success through organic social media. And we can see businesses built on the back of that when we look at Mr. Beast and what he's done with Feastables or we look at Logan Paul and what he's done with Prime. And those are businesses that they own. But beyond that, we, when we look at different brands and what they have built on the back of organic social media. And so while paying to play is an aspect of how I think we need to lean into and understand social media. Organic social media is the biggest opportunity and play right now and you know into the future. I think Gary says it so well. So I, I love that perspective and that that call out to what he sees and what I agree with as the biggest opportunity in marketing today, not just digital marketing in marketing today and into the future. So let's, let's jump back in. Until that happens, we will see what we've been seeing, which is on the flip side, for every American Airlines or BMW, there are real significant businesses being built every day purely on social. And for, I'm not talking about the long tail of thousands of companies doing $5 million a year selling a health and wellness product or t-shirts or you know, something on the side. I'm talking about the poppies, the prime energy drinks, the Mr. Beast Beastables. You're gonna start seeing multi-billion dollar revenue companies that are built purely from social. 
And, uh, and that should make sense to everyone because a stunning percentage of the most famous people in the world right now came from and live within social. They're not actors and actresses on, in film and television. And so, you know, I, I think I'm excited that I put out this book now um, because I went very nerdy with it. I went into very heavy detail. I'm like, okay, that's what I have to say. It's not, especially if you pay attention to anything I've said, it's nothing I haven't been saying for a decade. What I'm proud about with this book is I'm showing people how to like really think about it. This is much more a classroom textbook than, it's than a yeah, it's a, re, it's a real blueprint. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think I wrote it for my employees, to be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get 2,000 employees. I, I, I want to just shout out this book. I have not read it yet. I, I bought it, you know, immediately when it came out. It's one of the things I've just done through the years is anytime Gary V releases a new book, I, I buy it and I consume it. And so I haven't read it yet. But the fact that he's saying this is a blueprint, it, it really does remind me of that Crush It days. And, and so I, I need to jump into it. But I, you know, I just want to just shout out the book, The Interrogating Attention, because I do believe this is going to be kind of the textbook for marketing over the next five years as I study so much of what Gary Vee teaches and preaches when it comes to social media, marketing, digital marketing, just marketing in general. And so I, I think this opportunity and what he sees is when you can capture attention on the back of attention is successful business. And, and I think historically that's been done through buying TV and radio ads and Super Bowl commercials and, th and things like that. But, but I think at the end of the day, we can actually have attention uh, without paying for it, but we pay for it through our sweat equity of, you know, content marketing through organic social media. And these algorithms actually have the power to uh, allow us to build businesses on the back of it. And so it's such an important part of where, where marketing is going. And Gary sees that so clearly, and he's giving the blueprint for how to do it in both his book and, and really in all of the content that he puts out. 2,000 employees to do this properly. I'm like, you know what? I'll just write a book and make them read it on onboarding. That might, that, everything else hasn't worked. Maybe this shit will work. Sounds like maybe you also wrote it for the Fortune 500 companies. And what it sounds like you're saying is that um, what kept companies competitive for the last, let's say, 10, 15, 20 years is not what's going to keep them competitive for the next 2, 5, 10, 15, 20. In a, so, in a real way. Yeah, and they really need to catch up. So with that, though, what do you think is the opportunity here um, to actually do it? Because there's, especially when you're talking about Fortune you know, 100, 200 companies, there's a lot of, you know, old school systems, there's a lot of, you know, to your point about we don't need to sit for three months and have build a strategy and then, you know, launch it in nine months. How do you how do you, how do you think about mindset change and how do you think about real change within organizations to adopt this kind of thinking? I think real life, it's gonna come down to pain. You know, the real answer to your question, and I'd like to keep it real, is I don't believe they'll do it until they feel the pain that they're starting to feel. I believe that we have had more significant conversations. You know, I look at Caitlin and Avery, who are my partners in crime in a lot of these convos and many others in this room. We've had more real, I mean, this week, last week, more real conversations where it's not just, hey, we need social media and like we'd like to work with you, like it's part of our mix or we need it as a compliment. You know, to put it in food terms for everyone in here that's not deep in this vortex, on a good day, social media has been an amuse bouche. It hasn't even been an appetizer or a dessert. And it's definitely not the main meal. What we're saying is it's the surf and the turf. It is the mainest meal there is. I would say we've had more conversations in the last month, two months, this year, about, okay, like we're ready to take this serious. And it is only because they're feeling pain. Mm -hmm. They can smell it. They've got emerging brands taking market share. Or a, or a church or a competitor that out of desperation has gone into this and they can feel it. And so what I love about this is I think merit is about to prevail. I think the, to answer your question, I think it's gonna be pain and I think the reason they're gonna come to it is merit. Like, you know, for me, when all of you get to read the book, hopefully you will, I don't, I am only talking about social media because that's the biggest opportunity of underpriced scaled awareness right now. As a matter of fact, 
This is the fr- in this nanosecond, I've just thought what I'm about to say. This could, this book could actually become like a dummy series for me. The subtitle is very important. This book, the book is called Day Trading Attention. I've done that my whole life. If I wrote this book in 2000, I'd be talking to you about websites, email, right, and 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 search engines, right. And so when I look at this. It's called day trading attention, but then the subtitles how to actually build brand and sales in the new social media world. In the new social media world, I can replace that every five years. I can literally write this book in 12 years in the new VR world because, you know, for example, social is incredibly vulnerable to VR because the second this doesn't become the primary device of our society, all of a sudden social media becomes dramatically less valuable. That is what has happened to television commercials. Mm -hmm. The television that we all grew up with is a tertiary device now. You do not go to a television and turn it on and click channels between network and cable. That is gone. Uh, Even, you know, even boomers, I love when people think this is all for kids. Anybody here who is 70 or has 70 year old parents know that half the content that their parents are consuming is YouTube. And at bare minimum, they're turning on a smart TV and they know how to go to streaming services. Mm -hmm. There's not a 95 year old that doesn't consume a Netflix or a Hulu or a YouTube. It's over. And and we are, like, unfortunately, companies are holding on because of politics and corporate bull crap. It's, I, I want to jump in here it, it, at the end of the day. And I think, you know, the, so, so much of the data speaks for itself of, you know, as, as the last data I saw, the average American is spending about two and a half hours a day on social media and the mobile device and engagement on mobile with social is is consuming us and, and consuming attention in such a significant way. And, and one of the fascinating things, even from a business example, is Logan Paul's, you know, prime brand in the hydration space just surpassed Powerade, which is a known entity and they're chasing Gatorade that these have this kind of established brand presence and all of a sudden a social media influencer that has attention is able to explode in this space and disrupt or, or, you know, Mr. Beast with Feastables is exploding and chasing Hershey's, you know, it's been around forever that you don't think these major brands can be disrupted, but with attention, they can. And this is where you even see Elon Musk with Tesla because he has attention. They don't need to spend money on marketing. They could put more into their product and disrupt the whole auto industry and so he has mastered the art of attention and can essentially scale whatever brands he's aligned to professionally or in his business because of that attention and so it it is such a big play i you know i think even highlighting logan paul specifically is he's also pivoted you know so as social media has changed he kind of had this kind of silly teenager you know shock videos vlog that he has now pivoted to a podcast with his brand yet he's also huge on TikTok and using clips and things from his podcast from his wwe you know wrestling matches and, and different things to build his brand and i think where we continue to go is we it's not just like okay now we need to go all in on social media but it's pivoting along the way as social media changes and i think it will require additional pivots as VR emerges and as, as, as different mediums emerge. And, and so just like we saw TikTok and vertical video explode in the past few years, we don't know necessarily what that next big emergence is. I think we can see VR is coming, but but that's not, it's not a switch that flips overnight. Just like we didn't switch from desktop devices to mobile phones overnight from an engagement perspective, but we could see it happening. But the question was, is who jumped on that bandwagon fast enough and, and could see what's coming? And so we've got to be paying attention to to the trends that are developing and pivot along the way as we both gain and keep attention. Yeah. Everybody's stock price downstairs should be more valuable if they stopped wasting money. Then they waste more money on bad marketing than anything else they do. So you've been at the forefront as you're talking about social media and 10 years from now, you know, right now we're talking about AI. We can't really go anywhere without talking about AI, especially as it has to do with brand creative. You know, it taking over new ways to create content. We're talking about the fact that, you know, we're going to be interacting with AI bots. What is, you know, five to 10 years if we were looking back, since you've always been on the forefront, what do you think we will say about AI at this point? You know, it's funny. I've been at the forefront predominantly based on my little rant 
for the last seven minutes. My forefront is I talk about today and the world is all about yesterday. So, you know, historically, even like all the images and quotes that have been running here today, they were said at the time. It's not like I said, you know, TikTok is gonna crush before it started crushing. I only talk about what's actually happening. So this question's always been challenging for me because I really don't predict. I just, I just pontificate in the truth of the moment. That being said, of course, like any other human in here, I have thoughts, I try to debate it, I have pattern recognition. Couple things, first, you know, the AI conversation is really interesting because it's almost like, it feels to me like electricity. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be so omni. It, AI is not like an app. It's like the oxygen. Like, you know, I was in a meeting today around AI legal maneuvers that we wanna make as an organization and I was like, man, none of this is like, we're, we're talking about it and already it's become so default. It's like, what is AI? Right, and what I mean by that is automation and, and then profound automation, how it thinks for you, but I see us in the meeting today talking about automation as AI, not just, and so like, it's so big. And so I guess in five or 10 years, I think we'll stop talking about it the way we're talking about it now, the way that nobody here talks about the internet. You know, for everybody, who, who's over 42 in here? Raise your hands. So everybody that just raised their hands, we used to talk about something called the internet. <laughs> like we would talk about it a lot. We're like the inter- the internet's gonna and the internet and this internet, you know, and like, and we don't do that now. It's oxygen, and that's what's gonna happen with AI in ten years. We're not gonna be talking about AI. It just is. I want to speak to AI. You know, I think in general because one of the things, and I love how he said it's not an app, and, and I think what he's saying here is. Chat GPT is not AI. Chat GPT is one tool that is, you know, an AI powered tool that we're seeing disrupt and it's the most popular and it's it's bringing it to the mainstream, AI to the mainstream. But AI has been here for a season and it's integrating faster and faster than it has today. And I think the internet is a great comparison because when the internet was birthed, we saw it as the World Wide Web. We saw it as the information superhighway, but then it was also the Google search, but Google was an app built on the internet. And then social media emerged and we saw kind of web 2.0 and the internet is constantly emerging it's evolving it's improving we couldn't have even thought about youtube streaming it was all just text-based articles when the internet emerged and then even some images and things like that but we we didn't even thought about the speed of bandwidth at which we could stream videos in in the future or high definition videos or even knew what high definition videos were and and so the internet has emerged and evolved and become much more than the information superhighway and and i think ai is going to do the same thing it's not just going to be chat gpt it's going to be kind of integrated into everything in a very significant way and used in, in a lot of different ways and so the disruption of ai will be similar likely to the disruption of the internet. And that will be something that will come over years and probably decades of of development and emergence, just like the internet has and continues to as the internet develops and emerges and becomes faster and more integrated. And even when the internet was birthed, we we heard of things like ethernet, you know, and uh, what what is that? What's the difference between ethernet and internet? Or what is an intranet versus the internet? And so there there was a lot of confusion in early days. And now it's just, we don't even talk, like it's just there. It's a part of our lives and everything we do. And I think about all the things I do on my phone of banking and mapping and, you know, social media and calendaring and emailing, it's all integrated into the internet. And it's just there. It's just a part of our lives that we can't even fathom functioning without it. So AI is becoming that, but but it is more than an app. Uh, and I think that's such an important statement that he makes here as we even begin to comprehend how significant AI is going to be in the future, especially the future of marketing. And so it's that big. And I think every single human and every single organization will be massively affected by it. It's actually one of my greatest concerns as a human being right this nanosecond. It's almost like, you know, I think the thing that has worked for me and what I admire in others is when they can think about seven things, not one thing. So many people struggle because they look at things, they can only look at one thing at a time. And all the, all the opportunity sits when you're able to take seven to 50 different data points and make a strong observation, critical thinking. 
By the way, something AI may be able to take away <laughs> as an advantage. You know, what I, what I think is really interesting is I'm incredibly concerned that we live in a day and age where the human is more thoughtful than ever about work-life balance, mental and physical health, and it's actually beautiful. There's so much good about that. You know, obviously I'm a very well-documented, I love the grind, and, but that's only because I'm passionate about my, what I do for a living. Like, when, I don't, when I'm not passionate about it, I don't want to do anything. There's a reason I was a poor student. There's a reason that I don't do things around the house. Like, if I don't, if I don't like it, <laughs> you know, but I, but I think this is really an interesting insight. Like, if I don't like it, I don't want to do it, I have no passion for it, I'm giving it zero effort. So obviously I'm very well documented in believing in hard work and going hard and all this, because I love it. I'm thrilled when people want to find their balance. I feel like I have my balance. Balance is individual. But here's a very, very like important conversation that's about to hit its head. At a time where people are like not interested in going to the office, are looking for more time than ever, we're gonna have a problem. That problem is humans are gonna be replaced by AI. And companies are gonna do it. Just like we did with tractors on farms. Farms used to employ everyone. Almost everybody on earth, only a couple hundred years ago, worked on it and was employed by a farm. And then tractors came along and you didn't need as many people. This beautiful city, do you know how many people used to be employed here 120 years ago to clean up cow poop? A lot. But then the car came along and we didn't need to ride horses anymore, thus rendering our not needing people to go around this city and clean up horse poop. There's not a creative person on earth that is a mason. An architect and a mason are two different things. If you sit in this room or you're watching this video or you're listening to this and you're the idea person, good news. AI is about to become your partner in thinking. But if you are not the idea person, if you're the person that opens up Adobe and you make it, it's game over. And a lot of people do that for a living. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I don't, I'm not happy about that. I'm not, I actually not happy, not sad, not pro, not con, it just is. My question is, every single Adobe designer or video editor knows that to be true. So no matter, you, what I just said was not some sort of like, that's impossible. We actually know it to be true. There's unlimited videos that are viral on the internet right now that were made in one second, that are profound, that used to, cost thousands and tens of thousands of dollars and take 20 people. My question is, if you do that for a living and you know what I just said is true, what are you doing about it? I, I, I want to speak to this and, th and this is one of the things that I've communicated. A lot of people have talked to me about fear of AI and what are my concerns about AI as I study this, you know, so, so in, in such depth. And, you know, I, th I think there's like, just gonna be the end of the world. Are robots gonna turn on us? Is, you know, what, what's gonna happen here? My biggest fear of AI is, is not even the, the loss of jobs. I think it's the loss of purpose that's going to be tied to those jobs. And I think, I think just like new tech, like farming technology and, you know, tractors and, and things like that, they created efficiencies that helped us be able to, you know, have more access to food and resources. And AI is going to do the same thing. It's going to, you know, a lot of our tasks are going to be done by robots and, you know, AI bots that is going to make our lives easier, but it's also going to take a lot of the jobs that people are used to it. I don't think while he's saying like, what are you gonna do? There's a lot of people that are like, well, hopefully somebody will help me solve this. And and I think what he's saying is no, nobody's gonna solve this, you know, your lost job for you. It's going to create a, a significant societal problem of people not just losing income. I think our cost of living will decrease alongside the efficiencies created, you know, and, and at least in a lot of places. And But it's going to, to cost purpose that I think people find in their jobs. But I think just hoping that it's not going to take your job if you're a designer, if you're a copywriter, if you're, you know, that that's unrealistic. And, and so it is, 
this is going to be a co complicated societal issue that we all need to be thinking about, not just in our work, but the work of our employees and, and the people around us is how can we help set each other up for this future, but this future's happening fast. And I, and I think we need to be thoughtful about this. And, and it's a, the most significant concern I have about AI and, and the effects of AI from a negative perspective. And so I'm worried that we have this conversion, two things happening at the same time. At worst, an enormous amount of entitlement by human beings in first world countries. And at best, people being thoughtful about what they want in life and what balance they want. But all of it, there's one, there's, technology's the best. But it also has one thing that is very, very challenging. It doesn't care about our feelings. And so this is gonna be, and it is gonna reshape our society. And I, I went through this five minute rant to beg someone who hears it, who is in the business of what AI is about to commoditize, to challenge themselves, to put themselves out of business before AI does it. And what I mean by that, if you don't understand, is adjust. I think about it. My agency gets paid lots and lots of money to make creative. So I think about this every day and I think all of us should. And, and it goes pretty far. One of the things I don't think I touched on, no, I don't think, maybe I touched on a book, it all blurs together, but virtual influencers. Like everyone who's an influencer right now who's really winning is loving life. That turned out to be a great job, right? I mean, there's real pressure coming. It's called virtual influencers. And I mean, not real people. Correct, that's right. And the brands have all sorts of feelings towards influencers. They pay a lot of money, then they don't post it the way they want or do the thing they want or do another brand deal with their competitor the, the day after the six month exclusive. So you know what they're gonna do about it? They're gonna create their own influencers. Why not? It's not only why not, they should. This is the thing that I found incredibly interesting about everything in life and definitely in marketing and business. People act as if they're owed something. What the fuck are you owed? Nothing. This is business, this is merit. This is, you know, every influencer that got paid $1 today took that out of an actual celebrity 15 years ago. That's where that money went. So we're not crying for them. And the people that own the AI influencers are not gonna cry for the influencers. I think that industry is gonna get massively affected in the next 10 years. Okay, so we'll just stop the video there because it really speaks to that virtual influencer aspect of what, you know, is, is starting to become one of the popular features of AI and what's happening. And, and just to describe it a little bit is I can literally create an avatar, like a person that looks like a real person. I can make them look, you know, like anything I want to look, you know, to look like, and I can have them use whatever accent I want them to have, and I can get them to say whatever I want them to say. And so essentially where I'm making a video where I am a human, you know, somebody could create a video like this with somebody that has hair and has the ability to, to grow hair and, you know, and, and says things without saying as much as I do and really, you know, be better than I am on camera or even as better than Gary V is on camera and we've had this emergence of the creator economy and we we've had the development and uh, you know the number one job that kids want to be when they grow up is a youtuber and i do think we'll still have youtubers and people on camera and and, and things that humans are doing but we'll also have virtual influencers we'll also have you know, I, I saw Ashton Kutcher recently said with what he's been experimenting with, with OpenAI Sora video creation platforms, he thinks he will produce a full feature film using AI that will look like the actors and actresses are all, you know, real people, but they won't be. They'll be virtual actors and virtual influencers and, and the script will actually be written by AI for them and the scenes will all be generated by AI. AI is going to change everything and, and it's mind-blowing to think about this but I, I think even as i think about that is you know one of the things that i'm the actions i'm taking is i'm beginning to work on creating 
virtual influencers that that can help both my you know companies that I work with or my clients that I work with and how they might be able to be used you know to accomplish the marketing efforts that we have and this is just one of the uses of AI and and so I don't think this is necessarily good or bad but it's also an example a, another example of how AI is going to replace everyone and everything and so he talks about your graphic designer your job will be replaced by ai because the ai will be a better graphic designer and definitely a more efficient graphic designer than you are it's going to replace video editors it's going to replace copywriters and it's even going to replace actors and actresses and so much of it, even the recent you know protest by the the film you know creators and the writers is they don't want ai to be part of those things well it's gonna happen whether we like it or not in different ways and there will be things that will delay it and slow it but but there and there will be music created by ai that will probably be better than the music created recorded produced by humans and so you know i think there's some things that are hard to predict where, where this is going but ai is going to become more and more a part of our lives and i, I think the question is one the the best way of how we can even approach this is learning about it understanding it and, and and then also even speaking to where is this healthy where is this unhealthy where do i need to lean in where i need where do i need to to pull back but ai used at its best is an assistant to help us accomplish the things that we're doing and so i think that's how we can begin to learn how can we begin to integrate this not with the goal of replacing humans although that will happen tasks will be replaced but what i see that happening for me is that ai is going to allow me to do the things that only i can do and so ai is going to help me manage my email more effectively ai is going to help me manage my calendar more effectively ai is going to help me edit these videos more effectively uh, ai is going to help me script these videos more effectively and it's going to make me more effective at the things that i want to do and it's going to help allow me to not have to do a lot of the things i don't like doing i don't want to do but i've often had to even outsource to humans that i'm now going to just outsource to ai that's going to probably do a better job not have human error integrated and it's going to be a lot more cost effective and so naturally i'm going to lean into that but the effect of that is lost jobs which is why i believe that that is going to be one of the the biggest challenges we face societally when it comes to ai so it is an interesting day things are moving quickly and i believe that ai is in the days of early days of the internet we're in dial up internet days right now and it's pretty amazing you know just like the world wide web it was pretty amazing when we when we first got on but we could have never dreamed of where that this is going and and we've seen plenty of downfalls to the internet we've seen you know increase in you know pornography addiction we've seen increase in you know suicide rates due to social media you know unhealth or we've seen you know just all, all kinds of negative things come out of the internet but we also have seen all kinds of positive things come out of the internet where it's used well and used effectively and so i think we've got to be thoughtful in how we approach ai but i think if we lean into just concern and fear and rejection of this technology we're, we're going to get left behind and so i think now is the time to lean in and understand and you know if you're i'm in my 40s and so we talked about if you're 42 or older you'll understand this so i i naturally have a a place of like this is just weird you know virtual influencers that's that's weird but it's coming i'm going to lean in and, and understand it and and i think you know at the end of the day look to have integrity with how i use some of these tools but i'm going to do it with the deepest level of understanding uh, that I could have. So I hope this video was encouraging to you and understanding where some of this is going and how you can lean in. And so my, my big takeaways is, you know, Gary V who, who continues to, to be, you know, so thoughtful in his projections for where technology is going is one, Organic social media is the biggest marketing opportunity today and into the future. And AI is, is just at the beginning and it is going to affect everything into the future. And I think those are big takeaways, those are big picture ideas. But if you're not leaning into organic social media and you're not prioritizing understanding and learning when it comes to AI, you're missing out on significant opportunities for your business, your organization, your church ministry, whatever it is that you do, we need to be paying attention to these things. And, and I believe can have an exciting future on the other side of this as well. It's not all bad as much as it might be perceived that way. There, there are really exciting opportunities on the back of this as well. So 
Thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, do all the things, go follow me. I'm, I'm on all the Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, X, all the social media platforms love to connect with you there. My DMs are always open. If you have any questions, I can help in any way. Don't hesitate to reach out and I will see you in the comments. Uh, drop a comment, share your thoughts, and I'll be engaging there in the comments. I look forward to connecting with you there. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again on the next video. Thank you.